Hey everyone, this is Ryan Casada, and today I am making a video about being non-binary. I don't identify as non-binary, but I do relate to it, and I wanted to make more videos on my channel because people are asking a lot of questions about it. I'm here with Courtney, who is going to talk about the experience of being non-binary. Hi, my name is Courtney Kazee. I'm 19 years old, and I live in Southern Virginia. Question one, how do you identify? I identify as non-binary trans, and for me, both of those terms are very important for me to express how I experience my gender. Question two, what pronouns do you use and do all non-binary people use those pronouns? My pronouns are they, them, but sometimes I'm okay with he, him. Most of the time, just stick with they, them. No, not all non-binary people use they, them, and I feel like it's insane to see so many people trying to invalidate people of non-binary identities because they don't use they, them. And people claim, oh, it's not non-binary, they don't use they, them, so they're, they're not real. They're just faking it. They're just special snowflakes. <laughs> and it's not true. We all are comfortable with different things. And so just because some non-binary people are comfortable with they, them, doesn't mean that all non-binary people have to use those pronouns. Question three, what do you wish the world would know about non-binary people? I think the biggest thing I wish the world knew about non-binary identities is that it's non-binary identities. There are so many identities on the non-binary spectrum, such as gender fluid, gender flux, um, all of these different gender identities that fall under non-binary, and we all experience gender differently. Um, this person who is non-binary might experience gender in this way while this person who's non-binary might experience gender in this way. It does not make this person less valid or this person less valid because there are so many ways that you can experience your gender and it's all about how you feel comfortable. Question four. As a trans man, I, I experience gender dysphoria. Sometimes I experienced it more when I was younger before I had top surgery and stuff. But I'm wondering, do non-binary people also experience gender dysphoria? So I'm looking to hear your take on this. Some non-binary people do experience gender dysphoria, while some don't. I feel like for me, gender dysphoria has been a big part of figuring out my trans identity because I haven't felt comfortable with my body. And for me, seeing a lot of non-binary people who didn't experience gender dysphoria made me question if I was even non-binary until I realized that we all experience it differently and there are a lot of non-binary people who do experience gender dysphoria. It's the reason I use a binder, it's the reason that I'm not comfortable with she and her, it's the reason that for a long time I did some crazy things to avoid my gender dysphoria. And so I feel like some people do and some people don't, but it doesn't invalidate either group of people. Question five, how much does passing a cisgender mean to you? For me, I don't worry about passing unless I'm in like a place that I'm unsafe, but I'm wondering how you feel about passing. Do you pass a cisgender? Do you want to pass a cisgender? And what are the challenges that non-binary people face for passing? Passing a cisgender for me is a lot more of a strategy for survival. I live in a rural area in Southern Virginia and in the Bible Belt and there are a lot of people who just don't agree with non-binary identities and trans people in general. I live very close to North Carolina, which is an area that tries to make trans people not be able to go to the bathroom where they identify. So moving away from that, for me, passing a cis is a huge strategy of survival and avoiding discrimination, bullying, and possible violence. Question seven. My biggest challenge with being non-binary and trying to pass a cis is that I'm not cis, if that makes sense. I guess what I'm trying to say is in order to be true to myself, I have to lie to society. But in order to pass a cis, I have to be lying to myself and for me it just makes me really uncomfortable trying to decide whether I should be myself or if I should try to pass so that I don't get beaten up today and I think that that's the biggest challenge I face. I'm definitely an androgynous masculine person who likes to wear makeup and you can't dress as a guy and wear makeup without 
facing some kind of discrimination or bullying or violence or hate. <laughs> so that's my biggest problem. All right, thank you so much for watching this video. Peace.